So good afternoon and welcome to the latest Yellowstone Advisory webinar with Michael Carville, MD of Chemair Resources and Jeremy Deard, Director of Corporate Development and Investor Relations. They will present the half year result to the 30th of June, which were announced on the 19th of August. You're all currently on listen only mode, but if you'd like to ask a question, please type into the chat box at the bottom of the screen. We've had a few questions uh, sent in ahead of time and we'll cover all the questions at the end of the presentation. The format today is a presentation from Michael and Jeremy, which will last approximately 30 minutes and then we'll have 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A. So without further ado, could I now hand over to uh, Michael Carville to uh, take us through the results. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Alex, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for uh, tuning in to this uh, Ken Mayer H1 2020 results presentation. Um, as uh, Alex mentioned, we have a slide deck, um, and we'd like to shoot through this as rapidly as possible so as to uh, provide as much uh, time as possible for questions and answers towards the end. So uh, with, without further ado, Jeremy, I wonder, could we move to slide four? Yes. Uh, so Kenmer's strategy is based on three pillars, growth, margin expansion, and shareholder returns. Uh, with regard to growth, we have been implementing a set of growth pr projects for the last several years. Uh, there are three projects, the, the cumulative effect of which will provide us with capacity to produce 1.2 million tonnes of Ilmalac product per annum, uh, along with associated co-products. Um, the final project in this group of projects is due for completion before the end of uh, 2020. And so we're delighted to be sort of coming towards the end of this, uh, this long process of, of expansion and growth. Um, because the mine is very fixed cost, as we mine more and produce more material, our costs don't change very much. And consequently, expanding production has a very significant effect on our margins. And we expect to increase our, our margins very significantly as we move from our present level of production. Uh, the middle of our guidance uh, this year will be about 750,000 tons of Illuminati product. So to move to 1.2 million tons is a very significant growth profile. And uh, with that, we will move into the first quartile of the revenue to cost curve of this industry. And, uh, uh, and with that, that expanded margin and higher number of units, we will have uh, significantly higher EBITDA to provide more significant shareholder returns than we have presently been doing. And um, that's uh, as an important part of the board's commitment to stakeholders is that uh, that shareholder returns will increase as we improve the margin and, uh, and the EBITDA of the business. So could we move to the next slide, please, Jeremy? Uh, this is just a review of H1 uh, 2020. Uh, for me, the most notable thing that, that occurred in H1 is that we've been able to continue production through the whole period of the global COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, in my opinion, this is a tribute to men and women who've been working outside and have continued to very selfless, selflessly um, pursue the, uh, the continuation of production uh, in, in a very difficult circumstances. Uh, and it's something that many, many operations weren't able to do. Uh, I also note that we've been able through, uh, through various twists and turns and facing various challenges, we've been able to keep the development project, the, 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 our last development project, which is the move of wet concentrator plant B from its present mining zone at a place called Namalopi to a new mining zone where there is much higher grade material to be mined. Uh, and that, has, that, that move is, a, is, a, is quite a complex project and that has proceeded basically on schedule and basically on budget through this whole pandemic. Uh, also in the first half of this year, we have commissioned wet concentrator plant C and through the whole of the second quarter that worked at rated capacity and uh, delivered a meaningful, meaningful production 
and uh, and add it to our our ability to mine and process material. And finally, I suppose looking at this slide, the thing that st stands out to me is that despite the uh, the the slump caused globally by the COVID pandemic and and the necessary reactions that government had to, governments had to take to it to lock down their economies, the sales price for our weighted average basket of products has continued to increase throughout the period. So, uh, so we were very pleased with that very robust, robust performance by the, uh, by the product market. So turning to slide six, uh, it's just a, a, a quick update on the pandemic. Uh, when COVID became an issue, we, we immediately effectively locked down the mine. Um, we were concerned that we would not become a vector for, which brought COVID into either our mine community or the, or the local community. And consequently, people who were not there were not allowed to return. Uh, people who were there were allowed to leave, obviously, but if they did so, they wouldn't be able to return. And that meant that, uh, that there's always one shift on or and or of, of our four shifts. So that meant that the three ships that were left had to do the, the work of four ships. And effectively that was for three months. And in fact, some people have had to stay on site for much longer than that. Um, and uh, during that time, we developed uh, social distancing procedures, hygiene procedures, very strict hygiene procedures, uh, isolation procedures, quarantine. We developed, uh, we enhanced our, our clinical facilities uh, very significantly, we now have a full high intensity ward with the medical staff to to um, to operate it and we've stepped on wards. We have uh, specific allocated isolation areas and um, and all of that has then allowed us gradually reintroduce uh, people and then and let new people sort of uh, so and let the people who have been there go and take some well-earned or and or. We've also been supporting the local community with the provision of ventilators and CPAP machines and uh, education and, um, and masks and all, all that, that stuff to try to ensure that the local com community is, is as little um, hit by COVID as, as is possible. And with that, Jeremy, can I ask you to give uh, uh, the ladies and gentlemen a quick review of the financial uh, performance during the first half? Absolutely, Michael. Thanks for that. Um, in the interest of time, I will keep to the salient points. Uh, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to answer in, or ask in the, in the Q&A. Um, revenues were lower in H1 2020 due to lower production volumes as a result of forecast lower grades in 2020 ahead of the move to, of WCPB to Pilly Villy in the second half of this year, leading to higher production in 2021. This was partially offset by a 13% increase in the average prices received, as, as Michael talked about. Unit costs also rose due to the lower production, um, as broadly flat operating costs were spread over fewer tonnes, a factor we expect to reverse following the WCPB move. EBITDA came in at 37.2 million, while profit after tax was 12.7 million, both reflecting those lower revenues. Net debt increased to 52.7 million as we continue to fund our capital development programs uh, to lift production to 1.2 million tonnes per annum of Ilmenite plus associated byproducts. We've declared a dividend of 2.31 US cents a share. This is the third dividend that we've now declared and it's in line with our promise to return a minimum of 20% of profit after tax to shareholders. Importantly, we remain financially well resourced to fund the completion of the WCPB move while continuing to pay dividends. So stepping into slide nine, um, I'd like to draw your attention to the chart in the top right hand corner. Uh, our average sales price has now risen for the eighth consecutive half, representing strong market fundamentals for the commodities that we produce. Shipment volumes uh, decreased 14% in the half due to the lower production levels, though we had 150,000 tonnes of finished product inventories at the end of the half and expect sales to exceed production in H2 as some of that inventory is drawn down. 
on the bottom right hand chart you can see how uh, the volume offset by 16.7 million dollars whilst pricing uplifted by 11.5 and we also benefited a, a million dollars um, by way of a better product mix. On slide 10, you can see the full income statement. Um, freight costs were down year on year, reducing revenues, uh, but this also reduces costs as it's effectively a pass through from our customers, depending on the way in which we arrange shipping with them. Uh, costs were broadly flat, uh, while operating costs, profit, sorry, reflected the, the lower sales. As a reminder, uh, depending on the, the shipping makeup and, and pricing, the Ilmenite represents about two thirds of our revenues with, with Zircon and other products representing the remaining thirds. Slide 11 reconciles our cost of sales to our cash operating costs. Uh, you can see that midway down the page, the total cash operating costs actually fell 2% year on year. However, the lower production volumes down 19%, principally due to the expected reduction in grade at this point in the mine path, resulted in a reciprocal 20% increase in unit costs. These cash costs per tonnes for Ilmenite increased further due to lower co-product volume of zircon concentrates and rutile and lower pricing principally of zircon. Importantly, this $183 a tonne that we achieved in H1 2020 is expected to fall to within a range of $125 to $135 in 2021, following the move of WCPB and benefiting from the higher production volumes. On slide 12, you can see the balance sheet. Um, there are really three main elements here. The uh, increased property plants and equipment that was up due to the capital spend uh, in the first half of the year offset uh, by some depreciation. Uh, secondly, you can see that there was an increase in bank loans. Um, this is as we drew, drew down our debt facilities earlier in the year to ensure that we had liquidity during a period of uncertainty brought on by COVID. Uh, and finally, uh, there were some working capital increases, uh, but these are really captured best on the next slide. So on slide 13, you can see the uh, 2019 cash bridge where essentially our operating cash flow covered the property plant and equipment and, and other cash outflows. Um, whereas in H1 2020, due to the lower production, our operating cash flow uh, has been a bit lower, although this op obviously only represents one half rather than a full year of production. Uh, there was also um, a $29.8 million working capital outflow. This is principally related to a uh, invoice discounting facility that we would usually use but hadn't done. Because we've drawn down on our debt, it doesn't make sense to factor invoices from customers, which effectively means that we can get paid immediately for invoices that are due to be paid um, depending on their payment terms. Uh, in the future, but because we've drawn down those debt facilities, it doesn't make sense to do those. And so we haven't drawn on those facilities and therefore there's been a working capital build. Um, whilst we don't give forecasts on what that might be, we are uh, not expecting that to increase um, to the same level in the second half and, and should stay around the same for the full year. Beyond that, the, the timing of, of shipments also has a big impact because we ship in, in relatively large bulk quantities. And so if a shipment falls in one half or the other, that can have a, a significant impact. And we shipped a lot of product in uh, June of this year at the end of the half. And then with regards to our interim dividends, uh, we declared it at 20% of our profit after tax, uh, which is in line with our promise to pay out a minimum of 20%. Uh, that relates to a $2.5 million dividend distribution, which on a per share basis is equivalent to 2.31 cents per share. Uh, the record date for that is on the 25th of September and the payment date is made on the 23rd of October. We have talked previously about higher capital returns from 2021 when free cash flow is expected to increase due to those reduced operating costs um, and also benefiting 
from not having the level of capital development that we've had in the past few years. However, we haven't spelled out how that will be made to shareholders yet. It may be in the case of um, an increased payout, a special dividend, or potentially share buybacks. So passing back to Michael. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. Um, we believe this mine is a very sustainable mine. Uh, we operate it uh, using hydro-generated electric power, which uh, is zero carbon, uh, has a zero carbon footprint, and we are rehabilitated as we go. So um, we don't leave a slag heap or a big tailing stam or anything like that. The land is rebuilt, uh, revegetated, and given back to farmers. And we, we do it also with a, with a very good safety record. Uh, we are rated as a five-star safety, uh, uh, as far as our safety systems are concerned, uh, by the rating agency that's, uh, that's applicable. And uh, we have a low safety, and uh, we have a low number of injuries. However, those injuries increased a little bit in H1 2020, and we have now refocused the uh, our attention and uh, have a whole bunch of programs going to bring people's attention back to the safety issue. Um, could we move on to the next slide, please, Jeremy? Uh, during um, Q1 2020, we, we uh, mined more ore than we have ever mined before. So um, it's quite, uh, we're, we're quite, uh, quite pleased with that. That's uh, in part a consequence of, of commissioning wet concentrator plant C, which is a smaller wet concentrator plant focusing on an uh, area with slightly, with somewhat higher grids uh, that was, that's sort of difficult to get at with the two larger wet concentrator plants. But so the contribution of wet concentrator plant C allowed us uh, have, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, they are record production for the quarter. However, if you look at the grid profile on the, on the graph on the right hand side, you can see that we have been experiencing falling grids over the last while and those falling grids increased, those grids, in the, the, there was further reduction in grid in H1 2020, which was anticipated. This is coming as wet concentrator plant B comes to the end of the period of mining in the present ore zone at Namalopi. And as always happens, you tend to mine the good stuff first. And as you finish up and tidy up at the end, you have to uh, end up taking lower mine, lower grade material. As we move to the new mining area at Pelavili, we encounter much higher grade and also easier, uh, easier mining conditions. And so uh, at that point, we, the grid profile jumps forward again and uh, provides us with the opportunity to produce additional HMC to, to give us the capacity to operate at 1.2 million tons per annum. Can we move on please, Jeremy, to the next slide? So because of that reduction in grid, uh, we produced less HMC than we um, have previously produced. Uh, the grid was 28% lower, but our decrease, decrease in HMC production was only 12% less, and that's a consequence of, of uh, good mining operations. Um, and, and really everything else on that slide really flows from that point. So I think I'll, I'll just move on to the next slide, Jeremy. So our pathway to 1.2 million tons of Elmolite production per annum. So that's it's a very significant, uh, forward step and it's it's the culmination of a lot of investment a lot of work uh, and a lot of focus on increasing this production so our first project was that we upgraded wet concentrator plant b from 2000 tons per hour to 2400 tons per hour that was completed in 2018 in 2019 we built a brand new wet concentrator plant and a new dredge and opened a new mining area with a, with a new mining pond uh, that wet concentrated plant C, it actually completed or, or got commissioned in the first quarter of 2020. So we didn't get, uh, we didn't got, get contribution from it in the first quarter of 2020. Contribution really started in the second quarter of 2020. In 2020, most of our focus has been on the move of wet concentrated plant B which is the new enlarged wet concentrated plant of 2,400 tons per hour from its 
present mining zone, where it's encountering those reducing grids that you uh, that you saw on the previous uh, previous slide, um, to Belleville, where it'll, it'll see much more enhanced grids. That project is a significant project, it, and it required the building. It requires the building of uh, a 23 kilometer road, which has a capacity to take the pressure associated with moving this plant along it and involves a lot of very specialist contractors to do the move. So if we could move to the next slide. Um, so uh, the Pillavili has very favorable mining characteristics. We're very much looking forward to getting there. Um, and um, the, however, the project was, did encounter some challenges provided pro, pro, provided by the world down, worldwide restrictions associated with COVID-19. Um, and those, while well, we have managed to, uh, to get around most of those restrictions, and we believe that we will start mining in Pillavili and roughly the same time and, and roughly uh, on budget, we expect that there are some parts of the project that won't be complete in time. And that is one, that there is a positive displacement pumping system to pump the heavy mineral concentrate back to their mineral separation plant for separation into final products. Uh, that, that was being manufactured in Germany and was slowed down by COVID restrictions in Germany. So we will start without that and we will simply truck the material back to the wet concentrator plant for the first couple of months. And likewise, with our overhead transmission line, the pylons for that were uh, were being manufactured in South Africa and were impacted by the shutdown in South Africa. So again, when we start in Pelavili, we will be starting with our own diesel electric generating system, which we have as a standby system, but which we'll use for the first couple of months to get started. So thanks, Jeremy. Maybe we can turn on to the next page. And these are just a few photographs of uh, preparations for uh, the move of wet concentrator plant B. It will be moved, it will be carried by uh, self-propelled mobile transport units. And that is one of what you can see in the top left hand uh, photograph. That unit has concrete um, uh, units have been put on top of it to mimic the point pressure that the road will have to bear when the main concentrator plant is moved and uh, as a test and um, the road stood up beautifully to the test so we're very pleased. Um, the photograph on the top right hand side is a relocation pond so the wet concentrator plant B, B will be floated into that pond, the pond will be sealed, water will be pumped out and it will settle down onto those concrete plinths you can see in the photograph. The self-propelled mobile transport units will come in underneath it and then it will proceed along the road that you can see there extending from the pond. And those are just a couple of photographs of the, of the road. If we go on. So with, with um, B mining in Pillavili, we'll be producing much more heavy mineral concentrate. And so we have to make sure that the rest of the project is capable of processing and exporting uh, this, enhanced, um, this enhanced level of, of output. And consequently, we have been looking at where bottlenecks might arise in the mineral separation plant. And we have been altering the mineral separation plant by adding extra units of, of uh, separation equipment or increasing the capacity of, of bucket elevators or, or conveyor belts to ensure that it is capable of operating at comfortably at 1.2 million tons per annum. And likewise with our, our loadout facility, we have, a, we have a jetty of our own, our own port facility. Um, we load our own transport transshipment vessels there which go offshore and uh, we, they, they then transfer that material, the product material into customer vessels in the lee of islands that just lie offshore. And uh, we have been working to increase the capacity of the, this trans shipment uh, system so that it is, uh, it's fit for purpose and ready to, uh, ready to load 1.2 million tons per annum. So all aspects of the project are being dealt with. So thanks Jeremy, maybe we turn on to the next page. Uh, okay, just quick uh, review of the market. Um, 
just to re-emphasize what Jeremy is saying, the, uh, the um, graph he showed previously was of the weighted average of all our products, but this is Ilmanite. You can see the Ilmanite price has been increasing steadily. Uh, this is a consequence of a lack of investment in feedstock, uh, in the mining of titanium feedstocks for the last five, seven years, and, uh, and increased demand for those feedstocks, uh, which has which has allowed uh, world inventory, uh, which was somewhat of a large world inventory, to be gradually used up and with consequent gradual tightening of the market. If I could turn to the next page, please, Jeremy. Uh, and, and part of the reason for that are these two graphs. If you can see on the left-hand graph, that's pretty, uh, pretty clearly uh, a, a steadily, if not steadily, but a, a consistently increasing uh, production of, of pigment in China. And then if you look from the middle of 2019 on through to 2020, you can see that the production of feedstocks to support that uh, pigment production in China has in fact been reducing. And, and, and the consequence of that is that Chinese manufacturers of titanium pigment have been seeking feedstocks in the world market um, and, and therefore competing in the world market with, uh, with, Western, with Western pigment producers, with consequence being um, tighter markets and gradually increasing feedstock prices. Now, it is possible that uh, as a consequence of, of the, the um, COVID pandemic slowdown, that we will see significant softening of prices towards the end of the year. We're not quite sure. We haven't seen it yet, but it's 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 in fact quite quite probable. But nonetheless, we we still feel that the medium and long term fundamentals are extremely strong in this market. So thanks, Jeremy. Can we turn to the next page? Uh, so we have seen very solid demand in Hitch in H one 2020, and that has flowed into Hitch two. So, so far we haven't seen any, any significant reduction in demand. And in fact, we're, we're very fully sold. We have a couple of spot shipments still to make, but, uh, but otherwise we're pretty, pretty nearly fully committed. Um, we, we do expect to see some softening at the end of the year, but again, I just have to, to comment that I, I don't think that is a long-term softening. It will be a transitory period as we get out of the COVID situation. Zircon, which is an important co-product, has been softer, and that softness has been exacerbated by COVID. However, uh, there are a small number of producers that make, uh, uh, make up the, 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 uh, a significant majority of the supply in this market, and they have operated uh, uh, on, in a quite a disciplined fashion. And consequence, while the, while the price for Zircon has softened somewhat, it hasn't softened tremendously. And again, the long-term fundamentals for Zircon are extremely, extremely strong. So thanks, Jeremy. Maybe we turn to the next page. Um, yes. So uh, when, when COVID struck, uh, we weren't sure that we would be able to keep the wet concentrator plant B project on schedule. And uh, they, therefore, this, will have, this has a significant consequence on production for the year. And in fact, we weren't even absolutely positive that we would be able to continue mining. Uh, and consequently, we withdrew our guidance. Now with the, with the knowledge that we can continue to mine and, uh, and we have clear sight towards the end of the COVID, uh, sorry, of, of the wet concentrator plant B project, we have reinstated our guidance and the guidance is as laid out here. I don't think it's necessary to read through um, every aspect of it, but, it, but we have restated our guidance and, and basically it's 70, 800,000 tonnes of Ilmenite per annum for, for this year and, and associated co-products. So maybe if we move on, Jeremy, thanks. And so the question is, why have we been doing this? Why have we been spending so much money, focusing so hard, working so, so, um, so much? to implement all these projects, what is, what is the goal? And, and the goal is, as you can see here, is to take a company which uh, was operating in the worst quartile of the revenue to cost curve, uh, curve 
and, and move that position to the best quartile of the revenue cost curve. And, uh, and that's where we believe we will be in 2021 um, with the enhanced production. And that uh, that improved position of the cost curve, it's higher margins, providing better returns, but also uh, it provides great stability in the future, in the event of uh, a, a commodity downturn in the future, this company will be able to write it out as uh, it's extremely rare that um, that a commodity downturn bikes down into the uh, into the premier quartile, into the to best quartile. So thanks, Jeremy, if we could turn on. So finally, just uh, a quick summary. Uh, we have a very large scale asset. It's a world scale asset. Uh, we have a market leading position in the industry with strong balance sheet. Uh, we mine that ore body responsibly. Uh, we have a good safety record. We feel that we have done it in a sustainable fashion. Uh, we focus on operational excellence all of which has provided sustained profitability. And uh, we have very significant growth in the pipeline due to emerge from that shortly, uh, which we believe, believe will deliver significant shareholder returns. And so I think that's, uh, that's the last of our slides, Alex. Um, that's great, Michael. Well, Thank you very much. I was happy to, uh, to take some questions if anyone has any questions. Perfect. Yes, we, we have a number of questions. So thank you, Michael and Jeremy, for uh, taking us through that presentation. Uh, just as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, just please type it into the Q&A box um, at the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to get to as many questions as we can. Um, I'm going to start with the first couple of questions, which I'm just going to group together, and they are regarding the move of WCPB. Um, and the questions are, in relation to the move of WCPB, what work still needs to be completed and what is the biggest risk in moving WCPB? Well, uh, I mentioned that the, uh, the positive displacement pumping system still has to be completed. The overhead transmission line still has to be completed. Um, the road is not complete. It's, it's nearly complete, but it's not complete. Um, there is infrastructure, work to be done um, at the location in Pillabilly where we're building a new stores, warehouse and workshops, etc. cetera. Um, and, and of course, we have to move it. We have to do the move itself. And where is the greatest risk? Um, uh, the greatest risk, I suppose, is risk to schedule um, because we will not move this Based on as uh, on you know the you know a priority and date, we will move it when we feel that everything has been done, all the risks have been mitigated to the largest extent that it's possible to mitigate them, and when our operating team feels that they are comfortable that that the time is right and we're ready to go, and and so therefore we we won't we won't push them to move uh, you know, on, a, on a particular date or on a particular schedule, we'll do it when we're, we're happy that, that risks have been as, as effectively eliminated as possible. And consequently, that means that there is some risk to schedule. And I, I see that as the, as the most germane and pertinent risk. Okay, thank you. And just another one in connection with the move. I think you mentioned there'd be some uh, trucking of the product uh, once the WCPB is up and running, and also um, that you'll be running generators before the uh, electricity pylons are there. And so the question is, how long will the increased costs relating to trucking the product and running the generators go on for? Uh, look, I think somewhere around three months for both of them. Um, we still have to uh, managed to get the the pipeline for the positive displacement pumping system into the country. Uh, it got badly held up by uh, COVID restrictions. It was due to be manufactured in Spain. It got moved to Denmark, and then it had to be moved to Bahrain. So it, um, you know, we've had uh, we've had certain challenges there. So we think about three months. We'll get everything pretty well finished. Okay, fantastic. Alex, if I could just add there as well, I think, I think the other benefit of um, 
the fact that we'll be trucking and using uh, temporary uh, diesel gen sets for the power is, is that although it brings some additional costs to it, it also reduces the, the risk profile of the project. So the positive displacement pump line, uh, whilst we, as, as Mike said, you know, expect to ramp that up um, pretty quickly, it also gives us an alternative while the trucking's in place. So that sort of de-risks the project in many ways. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to pricing. A uh, question here is, please would you give us your views on the Ilmenite market? What prices are you currently getting and where do you see the market heading over the next year or so? Um, look, we, do, we don't like to give precise prices for our Ilmenite products. Uh, and we just don't do it. Uh, it's an opaque market. Those prices are confidential both to customer and, and supplier. But uh, uh, we have given our average price for uh, weighted average basket of products for the uh, for the half, which is which is in the uh, the presentation you you just received. Um, where do we see the prices going? Um, we've mentioned that it's um, highly possible that there could be a softening of prices towards the end of the year. However. What I was pointing out with regard to overall tightness of the market, I think is the prevailing force in the market. And if there is a, is there, if there is a softness that occurs uh, as a consequence of COVID, we believe it will be transitory and, uh, and the overall trajectory of the market is, uh, is for higher prices for Illuminate. Okay, thank you. Uh, a question here on the security situation. Could you comment on the security situation around your area? There have been some Islamist terrorist attacks in Northeast Mozambique. How near to you are these attacks? And does this have the potential to be a growing problem? So the attacks all have occurred in the north of Cabo Delgado province. And, Cabo de and that area is about 500 kilometers north of us. But it, it's, it's not, 500 kilometers in the UK along along the M1 motorway. It's um, it's a very different area, and so that that's, um, travel that distance is is quite significant. Um, so um, so we don't see it as a as a near term hazard or or risk associated with our business whatsoever. Nonetheless, we're obviously conscious of it and are watching it closely. Um, and as far as security in our area is concerned, we do not, our security force is um, an ordinary security force. They're not armed, they're involved in stopping people stealing screwdrivers and cans of diesel and things like that. Um, it's a very normal situation for any mine that could, was operating anywhere in the world, it's normal security issues you know, the occasional bit of theft um, and, uh, and things like that. We, we, don't, we don't have any, any other issues to deal with. Okay, thank you. Um, you're taking production up to 1.2 million tonnes per annum. How long do you foresee this, um, this level of production being sustainable for? And what plans do you have to increase production beyond that? So our mine plan at the minute sustains that production for every year except 2025, when there's a dip um, until 2040. And uh, the dip associated with 2025 is for wet concentrated plant A, which is moving to a new zone. And uh, there's a period when it's not mining at full, at full capacity. So that, that's that dip. Um, do we have any plans for uh, for further enhancing um, production? I think we will look at it, uh, but our objective is to get to 1.2 million tons, achieve and sustain 1.2 million tons, <clears throat> and use the uh, the um, the margins that we create by that production to provide returns to our shareholders. And we have had very supportive shareholders who've um, invested in the company and supported it for a long time. And um, it's, uh, I think it's, it's the company's turn to repay those, the, the, you know, that support that it has given, that the shareholders have given it. So 
we, uh, we are focused on achieving 1.2 and maintaining that 1.2, which is not easy. Like the, that will require, you know, focus and dedication and, uh, and, uh, and then using their proceeds from that to reward shareholders. Okay, thanks, Michael. We've got a link question coming in from someone else, which says, you've made good progress towards the strategic goals, which should mean three to four years of higher returns. Do you have any more visibility on the next tranche of capital expenditure, which has been flagged for the WCPA move in 2024-2025? We're working on it and we're doing doing base work on the uh, the scoping study for that project and um so, you know we we haven't got to the stage of pre-feasibility or or anything like that so we, we can't suggest anything other than it's likely to be somewhere around the same cost as um as wet concentrator plant b move okay thank you we've got a couple more questions here and just as a reminder if you do want to ask a question please just type your question into the q a box at the bottom of the screen moving on to uh, the government of mozambique what is the government's share in kenmer profits corporation tax and royalties and do they have an equity share they don't have an equity share and maybe jeremy you could uh, give a better more more uh, nuanced answer than me on the other aspects yeah, absolutely. So, um, broadly speaking, the government receives about a 2% or equivalent to a 2% revenue royalty, um, which is actually split as two different businesses. So you have the mining company and the processing company. The mining company actually pays a, a 3% royalty, but obviously it's not on the final product. And the processing company pays a 1% royalty. Those two added together. Um, equate to broadly 2% royalty on revenues. Uh, The company uh, also pays corporation tax on the mining company, uh, and that's at a 35% uh, corporation tax rate. The processing company actually sits in an industrial free zone, so it doesn't pay any corporation tax. Um, This is the same tax structure as other big companies um, or other big projects, I should say, at the time were receiving. So uh, the Mosau smelter is under a similar type of uh, fiscal structure. Uh, and the government doesn't have any take um, with regards to ownership of the project. Okay, thank you. We've got one final question here, which is, will Kenmay increase their dredging fleet in the near future? We have no, uh, no plans to do so. Fantastic. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, As there are are no further questions, we will come to the end of this webinar today with uh, Kenmare Resources. Thank you, Michael and Jeremy, for presenting so well. Thank you for everyone who has attended. Um, Our next uh, webinar is with Check It PLC on the 16th of September. So thank you very much for attending and uh, see you again soon. Goodbye.